Have you ever wondered what led to the Battle of Dunbar in 1296? This battle, a significant chapter in the tumultuous First War of Scottish Independence, was born from a potent brew of political tension and military strategy. At the heart of this conflict was King Edward I of England and King John Balliol of Scotland. King Edward, a formidable figure in Europe, had been embroiled in military action on the continent, in France. He had expected, or rather demanded, the support of his northern neighbor Scotland. However, King John Balliol, the Scottish monarch, dared to refuse. This refusal was more than a mere diplomatic snub. It was a bold statement of Scottish independence and a direct challenge to English authority. King Edward's response was swift and brutal. He invaded Scotland, a punitive expedition that began with the sacking of Berwick-upon-Tweed, a prosperous Scottish border town. Yet even as Berwick burned, King John Balliol refused to bow. Instead, he sent a defiant message to King Edward renouncing his homage. This act of defiance was a clear signal that Scotland would not be subdued easily. It also set the stage for the pivotal conflict to come, the Battle of Dunbar. The castle at Dunbar became the next objective for King Edward's army. The Scots, despite the Earl of March's allegiance with the English, held the fortress. King Edward dispatched John de Warren to invest the castle. The Scots in turn sent a desperate plea to King John for assistance, and the Scottish army advanced to rescue Dunbar. In this tense atmosphere, with the castle at Dunbar under siege and the Scottish and English armies poised for battle, the brewing storm was about to break. And so, the stage was set for the Battle of Dunbar. The castle at Dunbar, a beacon of Scottish resistance, was the next objective for the English forces. This formidable fortress, bristling with Scottish pride and defiance, was soon under the watchful gaze of the English. John de Warren, a seasoned commander under King Edward I, was tasked with the siege. As the English forces tightened their grip around the castle, the Scots inside Dunbar sent a desperate plea for assistance to their king, John Balliol. Meanwhile, John de Warren was not one to sit idly by. He orchestrated a strategic positioning of his men, especially his cavalry. Positioned at the edge of a deep gully, the English horses and their riders were like a sleeping dragon, ready to unfurl its fiery breath upon the enemy. As the Scottish forces arrived to relieve the besieged castle, they saw what appeared to be a retreat. The English forces, seemingly pulling back, painted a picture of victory in the minds of the Scots. The sight of English soldiers retreating was like a siren's call to the Scots, who were eager to break the siege and claim victory. In their haste and overconfidence, the Scots misinterpreted the English retreat as a sign of their impending triumph. This miscalculation was to be their downfall. They saw the English forces retreating, but what they failed to see was the quiet, calculated maneuver of the English cavalry. The Scots, buoyed by what they thought was their advantage, charged downhill towards the retreating English. They rushed headlong into the fray, their hearts pounding with the rhythm of victory. But as they charged, a chilling sight met their eyes. The English forces, far from being in retreat, had merely repositioned themselves. They had reformed their lines and were now advancing towards the Scots. The English cavalry, previously hidden in the gully, now revealed its full might, ready to meet the Scots on the high ground. The Scots, believing they had the upper hand, charged downhill, only to find the English forces ready and waiting. As the Scots charged downhill, the reality of the situation quickly dawned on them. It wasn't a retreat they were chasing, but a trap they were falling into. The English, far from fleeing, had simply reformed their lines, poised and ready for a counterattack. The Scots, once high on the prospect of victory, found themselves in the throes of chaos. Their downhill charge, initially a surge of power, had become a wild tumble into the jaws of the English army. The English, led by the seasoned John de Warren, seized the moment, launching a counterattack that capitalized on the disarray within the Scottish ranks. The ground, once a battlefield, turned into a scene of utter mayhem. The English men-at-arms, mounted on their horses, charged at the disorganized Scots, their swords glinting in the sunlight. The Scottish force, once a formidable opponent, now looked more like a disheveled mob, scrambling to regroup amidst the onslaught. The English victory was swift and decisive, leaving the battlefield littered with the remnants of the Scottish force. The once proud Scots now routed, their spirits as broken as their ranks. And the English? They emerged from the fray with minimal casualties, 
a testament to their tactical superiority and discipline. The tide had indeed turned, and in favor of the English. The Scots' downhill charge, initially an act of defiance, had become their downfall. The battlefield was left with a routed Scottish force and a victorious English army. The Battle of Dunbar marked a decisive moment in the First War of Scottish Independence. The aftermath of the battle was a somber scene. Following the fierce combat, Dunbar Castle, once a symbol of Scottish defiance, surrendered to the English. As the castle's gates opened, the English forces took into custody many significant prisoners, Scottish nobles and knights, men who had once held power and influence in their homeland. But the victory didn't stop at the castle walls. The war concluded with the English holding the upper hand, their dominance established over the Scottish lands. The aftermath was not just about physical control, but also psychological supremacy. The once mighty King John of Scotland was brought low, his spirit as broken as his army. He submitted to the English King Edward I, confessing to his act of rebellion and the abandonment of the treaty with France. Stripped of his royal vestments, he was sent into captivity, a potent symbol of the English victory. This was not just a surrender, but a humiliation. The proud Scottish king had been reduced to a pawn in the English hands, his kingdom now a vassal state. The Battle of Dunbar had far-reaching consequences, not just for those who fought in it, but for the entire nation of Scotland. It marked a turning point in the struggle for Scottish independence, a struggle that would continue for many years to come. The Battle of Dunbar, a pivotal event in history, forever changed the landscape of Scotland and the course of the First War of Scottish Independence.